What's up Simonics and welcome back to a new tutorial. Today we're talking about a kind of Angular more specific topic but also in combination with Ionic and that is writing unit tests in your application. Some time ago I asked on Twitter if you actually know what the spec file in your Ionic applications is all about and why you should use it or how you can actually use it. Eh, well that thread got a lot of attention so I thought I should create a video about unit testing. So in this tutorial I want to explain everything from the very basic steps to the more complicated topics of unit testing, everything you need to know. So we will get into testing Angular services, uh, we're gonna test pages, we even test a tiny bit of end-to-end -end testing uh, where we access UI elements, we're gonna get into promises, we're gonna get into uh, API calls in the end, so we're really gonna cover everything. If you uh, don't know what unit tests are actually about, unit test means simply testing specific units of your code, like one specific function and what the function returns, uh, and not the combination of different side effects and services. Really, unit tests focus on one thing and try to make sure that this specific thing works. If you wanna know more about Ionic in general, also, of course, check out the Ionic Academy, which is my online school to help you with everything Ionic, and you can also find the full source code of this tutorial linked right below the video. So now without further ado I think it's time to write some test cases and get to 100% code coverage which we will do. All right, let's get started with our testing example by first of all creating a blank new Ionic application. And within that application, we can generate one additional list for testing later, three additional services, so we can separate the different elements about testing a bit more, and also the capacitor storage, so we can have like a little real world example actually in uh, one of the um, classes. Then we're gonna start easy. We're gonna start at the, the most basic level. <laughs> so let's open the data service first of all, and let's input a bit of code. So this is a super simple get to do's function, which will just get an array of to do's, parse it, and return either an empty array if we don't have data or the result. So we won't go through all the specifics uh, for our services and pages, um, just wanna let you know the basic here. So now we can test this using the automatically generated spec file. Actually, if you don't uh, wanna have this, you can also pass a flag to the CLI when generating new pages and services to, I think it's just dash dash no dash spec, I think something like this. But anyway, let's check it out. This is the file that describes the unit test for our data service file. Um, we got a describe block in here, we got a before each, and we got a it block. All of these things come from uh, Jasmine. So Jasmine is a behavior-driven JavaScript uh, testing framework where you basically uh, define suites of test cases with a describe block uh, you define different uh, test cases with the it block and expect a result uh, with a specific function. So that is what Jasmine is used for. To run our test, uh, we can directly go ahead, so I haven't really changed anything else in this project, and use either ng-test or npm, uh, npm test, I think I can even, yeah, I can't type today. Uh, npm is a really hard word. So npm test will also call from the package JSON the test script. So previously I had to use npm run test. I don't know if this is something new. So, well, at least a few different ways to start your tests. Now, this will bring up the test runner and open uh, a browser win window. Usually, yeah, there it is, uh, right here. So I'm gonna make this to the side so we can keep track of it all the time and probably probably I'm gonna leave it open I'm gonna just do it like this uh what did I do where are you going hello ah there it is better so let's close this and get a bit more space so we can see we actually got the, all the tests executed already for our three services for the home page the app component and the list page and all of them are green that's usually a good sign or maybe not super good sign uh, if you don't understand why everything's green. But in our case it's good. So back to our tests. Uh, ah yeah, 
That's what I want to say. That's the second part. Karma is the test runner. So Karma here is running our tests. Jasmine is the framework to actually write the test, just so we get the, the important uh, keywords right. Now we can begin. This is how a test case for uh, Angular looks like. We are using testbed, which is a very interesting construct from Angular, which basically creates like a fake module or a testing module uh, by running configure testing module. Everything in here will run before each of our tests uh, and therefore it means we are creating a blank new test bed module and then we inject only our data service into that module. It's kind of like an ng module and we also store a reference to that service and by default we have one initial uh, it block right here. It should be created. It expects the service to be truthy basically be defined. Now let's write our own tests uh, because I'm lazy. I'm going to copy this. Um, it should uh, return an empty array in the beginning because that's what this function does if we don't have any to do's. Um, to make sure that we don't have any to do's, uh, we should probably add an after each block as well. So within the after each block, we can say local storage dot remove item to do's. This will just make sure uh, that really everything is gone and I can think we might want to set the service to null as well. So now let's see if we can check this. Uh, we expect the service dot get to do's. So really the service is just our data service like you would use it in any other class and then you can look for a specific function. So in our case we want to look for to equal because we want to have it to be equal to an empty array. Now I won't pass an empty array here because that's what I already expect. Instead I'm going to put in something to make the test fail first of all because then I know okay I'm changing it and then it works um, because sometimes you really write a test case in the perfect uh, uh, way how it uh, should be and everything's green but it's actually not completely true. Um, so you made a tiny mistake uh, at some point. I can't really <laughs> come up with an example for this yet, but trust me, you should first make it fail and then you make it uh, work. So here we got our first own test case for the get to do's function of our data service. That was pretty easy, right? Uh, we spent like 10 minutes talking about the general setup, but the actual test case was pretty easy. We, we, we didn't really have to do anything else here. Yeah, we added the local storage stuff, but that's really all we did. So let's add two more cases to see how we could also test this. We could also say we want to return an array with one object. So we create an array like this and set it to the local storage. And then we expect the get to do's to equal our array and also to have a size of one. Again, usually I would do something like this first to really make both of them fail and see expected length one to equal zero. That was this problem right here. And then I uh, expected first to do to have size two. So I'm going to change this to one and then all tests are back green and also we can check for the right length of the array really uh, doing it once again like this. So we have three nice examples. Actually, I think we don't really need this. That's really, oh, we don't need this. That should be enough. Also, we're testing the one functionality. So our code coverage in the end should be fine. Um, now we're going to take it a step further. Let's go to our API servers and let's change the whole service to this. Um, basically, oh, I didn't install capacitor storage. Oops, definitely need, yeah, great. Uh, yeah, a great number two and on third try, we are gonna do it. Okay, um, within the API service now, I implemented just three easy functions. Get stored to do's, which will load from the capacitor storage, the to do's and return an empty array or uh, the actual uh, to do's. Add to do simply pushes one to do and stores it back to capacitor storage and remove removes one element. The interesting thing here is now that these functions all return a promise. 
and testing them on their own here inside in, uh, the API service is actually quite easy. Um, so what I want to do in here is, uh, first of all, inside the API service, also use the storage. Um, now, usually you want to really reduce dependencies to other parts um, of your code to a minimum, but I think the, the storage dependency should be fine for the test and should in general work. We just need to make sure, just like we did before for local storage, that we clear our storage in this case after each or before each function runs or each test case runs. Okay, now we can just go ahead. Okay, I can just copy this really. I'm too lazy to type. It should first of all return an empty array. So I'm going to expect, or I'm actually going to grab first of all the value from our service by using await. And that means I also have to add async in here. And then I expect the value to be or uh, to equal something that definitely <laughs> fails. And then we see uh, expected zero to equal one. I'm going to change this and then I see, okay, the initial array is empty. Now you see the testing promises like this uh, on their own here inside the service is actually quite easy. Let's do two more examples. So one to test the add to do function. Again, we can await this, then we await the result and then we check if it is equal to buy milk or you could do it like this and then it would definitely fail. Uh, same for removing the to-dos. Uh, that's probably a bit longer code. Oh no, oh no. <laughs> there we go. Um, I just add three items. Then I grab the to-dos, which should have a list like this. Then I remove the item at index one, which means we only end up with buy milk and buy ionic. Um, now let's put this into this part here. So we can definitely make sure we see uh, expected by ionic to equal by coffee. So I'm going to fix this. I'm going to remove all the things and then the test case turns green. Now, this is pretty easy. If we just handle it like we would call the asynchronous function on our own inside, um, uh, inside well, inside a general page. This becomes more challenging once you integrate or use the service from a page and then uh, have the changes inside that page and you want to check this and we're going to get to that once again later. Just see that for testing the service with promises in isolation, you can do uh, just the async await syntax and it works perfectly fine as we've seen. Now, before we get to all the more complicated things, we want to take a step back from the services and go to our home page for a little test of a page because before we've tested a service, now we also want to test a page. And what we want to do in here is first of all, I'm going to change the home page to look like this. So we're loading a few to do's from our data service. Remember, this is the one with the synchronous operation. So this should return to do's immediately. So therefore, let's go to our testing file. And this file already contains a bit more code. Um, now we got this fixture here. We got the component. Previously, we had a service. So that's kind of the same. And now we got the fixture. And the fixture is interesting. Let's check out our before each first of all. We once again have the test bed from Angular to configure our testing module. And this time we got an additional block in here with the declarations for the actual component and imports that we might need to actually set up this component. You could also have different other imports in here like the HTTP client, uh, the Angular router, uh, you can actually test or use a uh, testing instance of the Angular router and uh, HTTP client. And finally, this is compiled. As a result, uh, we have a full fixture which contains both the actual template and the page. And therefore, we can grab from the fixture just the component instance right here. And we're going to see that we need detect changes uh, later on to trigger a reload or detect the changes 
of the component whenever we change something uh, like a variable and then it needs to be reflected in the view. I don't know if we actually specifically need it in here, perhaps for the beginning, uh, but otherwise that's it. So that means we got our component. We could even grab the template, so the HTML from the fixture. We're gonna do this in the next part. For now, let's start the easy way with the home page. So it should be created. <laughs> I'm just gonna leave it in here. Uh, and as always, I'm gonna copy this and say um, it should um, get an empty array in the beginning. So if within our component we call the load to do's function, we should in the beginning um, get an empty result because that's what uh, we haven't stored anything in local storage, so that's fine. So therefore, component dot to do's, and you see the component is really just like the home page instance. I can access all these things. Um, I expect them, of course, to equal uh, one. Yeah, we're gonna make it fail, uh, and then uh, oh, you're not happy about that. You like this one? Expected empty array to equal null. That's good because we also had the plan to make this an empty array. So everything's back to green. Now we also want to test if we actually set some items up front, um, if this still works. So let's do it like this. We write an array directly to local storage. Then we call our component load to do's function. And now we expect it actually not to be an empty array, but instead it should be the empty, uh, the array that we wrote there. Um, to equal, uh, the, where did I go wrong? Yeah, maybe, maybe I need a different name. It should set and load an array. Ah, uh, okay, x five to equal zero. Where, ah, haha. yeah, that's what happens if we don't add the after each block <laughs> to remove the items from local storage. So it's really, uh, you have to be careful with uh, local storage or capacitor storage if you're using it, if you don't fake the result of your service, which is also possible. Uh, we're gonna get back to that later uh, in the next, actually I think in the next part, no, in the following part when we look at them. So this is the easy way. If you have functions, if you have variables, you can easily test them like this um, just call the function, call the expectations, and then you're fine. We will get to the really nitty gritty stuff about promises and observables in the end. For now, we're gonna take one little sidestep and talk about UI elements. Because you can actually um, also test UI elements with your unit test. I know this is getting into the direction of end-to-end -end testing, um, so I don't know if I'm a huge fan of that and we're just gonna do it in a little example. So let's open the list page and within the list page, I'm gonna add this code. So this will grab from the API service, the to-dos, uh, which is now an asynchronous operation. Um, for the actual list page, HTML, I'm also gonna add some code. That means if we don't have any to-dos, an ion card will be displayed. Otherwise, we're gonna have a list of ion items. Uh, that's really, actually, that's all you need to do uh, to know about this. Then we go back to this file, which is our list spec file. So now we wanna test if we actually see that card initially on the screen, because initially to do's is an empty array. Uh, this happens at a later point of time because it's a promise. So initially it should really display this no to do's card. And we're gonna test this by grabbing an element from our fixture. So we're gonna access the debug element. And then we got different functionalities to query, query all, query all nodes. And what we're gonna do is we wanna query and use buy. We're gonna use buy from the Angular platform browser. I think we could also use protractor, but buy from the Angular platform browser is just fine. And we wanna uh, query them by the directive. And in this case, it's the ion card. So we can really import the ion card from Ionic Angular here. And this element will now uh, hopefully have all the items. So we expect the element to be 
Uh, let's expect it to be faulty in the beginning. And we're gonna see what happens. Uh, it's definitely not faulty. So this is an ion card element. So let's change it to be defined. But we can take this a step further. We can also expect our element, um, actually not the element, but the element dot native element text content. Okay, now we, <laughs> we leave the code completion area uh, and we need to trim this as far as I know. And we can expect this to be, let's expect it to be an empty string and we're gonna see what happens. Expected no to do's found to be an empty string. And this is exactly what's displayed in the card right here, no to do's found. I'm using trim to get rid of the trailing spaces. Uh, and if we make it like this, we have a test that we actually show a card if we have no to do's. Again, this is going into the direction of end-to-end -end tests because we're testing different UI elements. There are other frameworks like Protractor or uh, inside the Ionic Academy. And of course we had Cypress for testing and I know Ionic is working on something for end-to-end uh, -end testing this year. So um, I wouldn't really recommend it like this. Yeah, you can do it, but I don't know if you really wanna do it like this. Just a little uh, second example. This can get, bit, get a lot longer if you have something like this. For example, we now, um, where do I get started? So first of all, we expect, uh, once again, the no to do's found. Then I'm setting the component to do's to an array, uh, to this array. And then we need to call fixture detect changes. This is the point we had already up here. Uh, if we change something in the class, like the to do's in here, normally Angular just handles this change detection. But inside a test, we manually need to detect the changes because otherwise the view wouldn't be updated. That's what happens if you're using the zones file uh, wrong. <laughs> yeah, welcome to all German friends. Uh, and if you're getting an API result and it's not displayed inside your view, although you see the log and the data is there. So detect changes, manually triggers the detection, uh, the change detection, and then we can query again by what we had before. Now the card should be removed because now we can query by all ion item elements and instead we should have an array of the length of our array because we have an ng4 running through these to-dos and therefore we see expected five to be three. So let's change this back and then the test works once again. Okay, now it gets interesting. Now we're gonna talk about spy. We're gonna talk about spies and we're gonna talk about uh, promises. For this, um, yeah, well, let's stick to the list. Let's stick to this one. Um, I'm gonna actually remove these or comment them out so they don't confuse us anymore. And we're gonna write another test. So there are now different ways to use um, asynchronous functions or handling them correctly within Angular tests. Uh, first of all, what we need to do is we need a reference to the API service because the list page also injects the API service. So let's add up here, let's service API service. And we're gonna manually inject the API service into our test bed. We're gonna keep a reference of that by using testbed.inject. Uh, previously this was, I think, called get, something like this. Uh, and we're gonna inject the API service class. Now we got a reference to this and we've got in injected into our testbed. And we can start uh, with a little function. So it should load asynchronous to do's. That's the whole idea. And we're gonna start the first example with the, uh, let's say, Jasmine way of doing this. So imagine we have an array of five elements. Now we uh, could somehow inject this into storage and make sure that the API service returns the data. But if you want to unit test something, a function right here in your page, you wanna don't really have any, any idea about the API service or the function, what it actually does, because then you would actually test the get stored to do's function instead. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna use a spy and call the spy on function. And we wanna spy on our service. 
uh, and especially, especially on the get stored to do's function. And now you can see that the syntax becomes really interesting and please return the value of a promise which resolves uh, with our array. Okay, let that sink in. That's gonna take you some time. <laughs> what, we're gonna, what we're doing here is really uh, creating this spy, which basically fakes the get store to do function of our service. There are also other ways um, to inject something like this where yeah, there wasn't the page. Uh, testing services. <clears throat> Uh, uh, Angular test bed. Yeah, basically here you can also create a whole spy object of a class and provide it for the service, just like using a mock class for a specific service. That would work as well. Um, but what we did is slightly different. But anyway, our um, spy now will return a promise and resolve with this array, which is really just like what the function is usually doing. And now let's continue by saying component, please load storage to do's. And this is an asynchronous function. Uh, well, and the to do's won't be set until this is finished. So that's a promise. Um, I'm pretty sure you know how to, uh, how promises work if you get into testing. And now the important question is how do we handle this within our tests? And we're now inside the first way of doing this by using done from Jasmine. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to say spy calls most recent call return value and we ex use the promise here because uh, the return value is a promise. And then we get something that doesn't really matter too much but more important is that at this point we expect the component dot to do's um, to be, well, let's say one. Uh, you expect them to be an array, right? Yeah. But anyway, we're gonna do it like this. Uh, we see it's loading and it's not stopping. And this is where done comes into play. Oh, actually it stops. Uh, so it's expected one, two, three to be equal one. That means we actually wanna have it equal to the array. Uh, still, we see it takes quite some time and we have a huge suite of tests. That's going to be a problem. So here we can now use done from Jasmine, which makes this end. So this is used for promises for handling asynchronous operations. Um, and that is one way to handle our operation. But there are two more ways uh, how we could approach this. So I'm going to copy this. I'm going to remove a bit of this. So we want to leave it like this. Uh, and now we're going to use something from Angular, which is called wait for async. Um, we see now it, everything becomes red. Um, the trick here is we're going to do really just the same like we did before with a spy. Everything's fine. But now we're going to use fixture when, oops, uh, why, why are you red? Ah, I think there's a, I think we need it like this, so we need to wrap everything inside wait for async. Um, so we're gonna use when stable, and now everything turns back to green, that's good. So when stable returns a promise as well, and we can get the result just like before, and then we can once again expect, actually I think we can copy this, expect the component to do's to be our array. Again, we could make this uh, fail for for now. Yeah, but then we're gonna make it right. Now, what's the difference? Uh, well, the difference is we don't need to use done and we're using the fixture when stable. So this get a promise that results when the fixture is stable. This can be used to resume testing after events have triggered a synchronous activity uh, or a synchronous change detection. So that's really what we're gonna do here in here. Um, this part basically waits for all promises of your class or page to be finished. And it's more, more angular alike than the done from Jasmine. Now, there's one third way to actually do handle these. Uh, again, we can keep it like it is. Maybe we wanna change the array also so you don't, uh, you really trust me. 
Um, and what we're gonna do in here now is we're not using it like this. We're gonna use fake async. That's the third way. And you're using fake async like this. Uh, let's expect, let's try it like this. And we're gonna see expected empty array to be one, two. That means we don't have the real result here. And with fake async, we can now use the tick function to simulate basically one tick. Simulates the asynchronous passage of time for timers in the fake async zone. And as a result, it looks like this. So this part is more like using async await in your real code. As you can see, you got this easy flow. In all other places, you got this uh, promise uh, chain here where you see the indentation. I don't know, um, both are really great ways. Um, you can use whatever you prefer. I think I might actually prefer this one, but tick uh, gives you also a bit more control about really what you wanna do and when you wanna do it. So it's up to you how you wanna handle it. Most importantly is also the spy on, uh, which is really powerful to uh, have a stop of your service um, uh, in either injected, like we've seen here, uh, or just like this, we created both and it really, it really looks interesting. So spy on and return value. But if you read it aloud, it really makes sense. And that's what Jasmine is really about. Now let's do one final example because I know you requested this also upfront and that is handling uh, HTTP calls. Most applications do some kind of HTTP call. And what you don't wanna do is actually make the HTTP call in your test cases, in your unit tests. So for this, we're gonna first of all inject the HTTP client into our app module. Uh, no, 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 it goes to the imports. There we go. Uh, and then we can head over to the product server. So I made the API uh, first thing, really let's not talk about the names in this, in this tutorial. Uh, but what we need in the product service is a simple call to an API or it could just be any kind of API in here, doesn't really matter. And the first thing you're gonna notice is that your tests turn red. They turn red because you have a problem. Null injector, null injector, product service, HTTP client, no provider for HTTP client. That usually happens if you don't inject a certain module uh, or import a certain module. And the same is true in here. So we're gonna now add to our test board a uh, test bed and imports with HTTP client. Nope, not what I wanted. I wanted the HTTP client testing module. Thanks for not giving me any uh, import. That's fine, that's fine. I'm gonna find this anyway. From Angular common HTTP testing. Let's see, will this turn it to green? Yes, it already turns this to green. Nice, I like it. Um, but now we also need access to the real HTTP client and keep a reference to the HTTP testing controller. And we're gonna get both of them from our testbed by calling the inject function again, first injecting the real HTTP client and then also injecting the HTTP testing controller. Um, this is gonna be very helpful because after each call, we're gonna call HTTP testing controller verify uh, verify that no unmatched requests are outstanding so you don't have anything pending still in your test cases. This is the basic setup and now we can write our API test case. So it should make an API call. Actually not a real API call, it's gonna be a little fake call. So because it's gonna be a fake call, I'm gonna create a mock response. This mock response will be used for our fake API call. And we're gonna do an API call just like we would call it uh, all the time and use subscribe in here. And then we get back a result. And I could also lock this out. It will really show up in here. Uh, result. Oh, we, haven't, we haven't seen the lock at all, right? Uh, let's see, there we go, console. Uh, okay. Yeah, I wanna reload. I'm fine with reloading this. So right now, uh, expected no open results, found one because this is really not working at all. 
we've injected the HTTP client testing module, so it's not firing off any uh, real request. So what we need to do now is to create a mock request. We're gonna do it like this, const mock request equals HTTP testing controller. This is the one uh, we're using here. Uh, and we expect one API call. So we can now pass in the URL and the URL for this is of course the one from our service. So we expect an API call to this endpoint uh, from the get product function. And then we also can uh, add another expectation. So we expect the mock request request method to equal um, get. Actually, I want to make this post just to make it fail. Uh, at this point, I don't think we're going to see anything. Yeah, expected get to equal post. That's cool. So we're going to change this back to get. Now, what we don't have is any kind of real result, as we can see. And to really perform or let or fake the, the API call, we're going to have to flush some data to our mock request. So we're using flush now, which is uh, resolve the request by returning a body plus additional HTTP information. And we're going to just flush our mock response. That means to the API call that goes out to this endpoint with a get request, we're going to return this data. And now we should actually see something in the log, which is the result with our dummy object. So no real HTTP request happens at this point. And now you can just go ahead and uh, test the hell out of the response. You can expect it to be truthy, to have the array size one, extract the first array and have it to be equal to your mock response, whatever you want to do, really. Uh, everything should turn up green because this is how we can easily test. Really, it always almost fits one screen right here. Um, and you can do this for all functionalities. If you have a functionality where you would pass an ID, you could uh, make sure that the ID it turns up here, that this endpoint is really requested. Um, you can uh, return other data inside the flush block or add HTTP header options. Really, this is so powerful and I, in the past I really thought, well, yeah, observables and promises and testing them, that's really, uh, it's challenging. But no, it's not that challenging at all in the end. If you take a look at this block or this class, it's a very simple way of testing and a lot of requests look like this. Um, you could test more, but most of the time really your requests just return some data from your API. And this here is a great way to test this. Um, one last thing I wanted to show you, actually I forgot about this, is if you add an F before the describe, it will force this to only run this one suite of calls. I think there's also one to disable a specific suite, but F is just to force it. Uh, quick note, uh, maybe it's gonna helpful, maybe gonna be helpful for you. Uh, if you have like 50 different test suites and they take quite some time and you wanna change one, uh, just add the F we're working on and you're gonna only get the results for that. Now, finally, uh, there's one more thing that I wanted to show you and that is this little command, ng-test dash dash no watch, running it only once, and producing the code coverage. What this does is something that you could easily integrate into your uh, CI environment. Um, if you have a Jenkins running or anything like this that automatically executes your tests, you could add this to your, uh, to every post commit hook or something like that. And what it does, it generates a new folder coverage within is an index. Uh, can I just, yeah, whatever. Open it and da 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 da. If you're a big fan or if you're a manager of your team, uh, if you're a big fan of code coverage graphs and nice images, this is what you wanna display in your office wall uh, automatically. And you can get this with this command that we just ran. It shows you the code coverage. You can also dive into this and see uh, which parts are covered right here, uh, how many tests you got for specific functions for the services, 
We got a really nice test for everything in here. We got 100% code coverage. I highly doubt that anyone else with a real world application gets to 100% code coverage. But if you do, you're pretty, pretty safe for all future updates. So um, uh, getting the code coverage, once again, the command ng test no watch code coverage will produce this folder. I think you can also specify different other options for this. Um, just take a look at the Angular documentation about this. Uh, it should be right here. There's the command. You can also add it to your Angular JSON file. Um, and there's a bit more you can do about the code coverage, how it should look like, I think. Um, but that's pretty much it. And if you follow all of this, you're gonna have nice test cases, unit test cases in your Ionic application, Ionic Angular application, and hopefully your code won't break on the next update. Alright, and that's it for today's tutorial. I hope you enjoyed this topic. It was a bit different, not too much focus on Ionic, but more on Angular. But I think it's a good idea to understand what the spec files in your project are all about and how you can use and write unit tests in your Ionic Angular applications. Now, there's also the other topic of end-to-end -end tests, which I find actually also maybe even, well, in Ionic applications, maybe even more interesting. Thanks, uh, Mail Sound. Um, and we're gonna see more about end-to-end -end testing from Ionic this year, I'm pretty sure. They said this is gonna be a focus for the Ionic company this year. And so far, I haven't seen this. Maybe if the video comes out, there is already something released, but otherwise we can expect something cool, some product about end-to-end -end testing, really testing on a device or virtual device. I don't know what it's gonna be. But so far, unit tests are also important, but don't forget about end-to-end -end tests. Uh, I also have a tutorial about this. Just look up for Cypress testing, uh, where I explain how you can get started today with end-to-end -to -end tests. If you enjoyed the video, please also, of course, hit the like button and stay subscribed for more Ionic videos coming every week. And I hope you will have a great week with also 100% code coverage. So I'll catch you inside the next video. And until then, happy coding, Simon.